Good morning, Cambridge class. This week we have three comprehensions for you. Um, the first one is about Marcus Rashford, and the second one is about the uh, solar system, and the third one is about coal. I thought you'd be interested in each of those. So I'm going to show you the video. Uh, you can pause it and read it for yourself, or you can read it with me. I think I might just change this a little bit because we did it slightly differently last time, and I think it worked better last time. Let's just take that. Okay. We'll take that. We should, there we go, fit it on a page. Perfect. Let's put them back up there. Don't know if I need to pull the way down there. Goodness me. Nearly there. Okay, so Marcus Rashford, campaign for kids meals so who is marcus rashford marcus rashford 22 is a professional footballer who plays for manchester united and england he also helps a charity that provides meals for those in need and a quick look at the glossary here we've got the word government a group of people who run the country mps member of the uk parliament elected to represent an area Parliament, where laws for a country are debated and passed, and scheme, it's a large plan for a particular aim. Okay, Marcus Rashford, the gifted Manchester United and England footballer, has persuaded the government to provide children with vouchers over the summer who get free school meals. Currently, some children receive free school meals. Free. However, during lockdown, these families have been given vouchers to buy food at shops instead. Originally, the government was going to stop giving out these vouchers in the summer holidays. When Marcus Rashford heard this, he decided to take action. He wrote a letter to all MPs in Parliament. He urged them to make sure that those in need could get free meals during the summer holidays too. In his letter, he wrote, Please reconsider your decision to cancel the food voucher scheme over the summer. He also mentioned how, when he was a child, his family relied on breakfast clubs and free school meals. After they received Marcus's letter, the government changed its mind. Now the vouchers will continue to be available over the summer holidays. When he heard the news, Marcus said on social media, I don't even know what to say. Just look at what we can do when we come together. Boris Johnson told journalists on Tuesday that he'd phoned the football star. Mr Johnson said he thanked him for what he had done. Manchester United, his team, posted that he was a hero, an inspiration, and one of our own. We are so proud of you. United rivals Liverpool FC called him a role model. This is not the only action that Marcus Rashford has been taking. He's been working for a charity called Fair Share that aims to tackle hunger and food waste. So far, he's helped the charity rate to raise almost £2 million. The money has been used for free school to feed school children that get free school meals during lockdown. Okay, so that's the text. Here are the first questions. Now you might want to scroll the text back so you can look at the text while you're answering the questions. You might have to pause the video. And here are the second set of questions. You might want to pause the video so you can read those. Okay. Don't know how that's ended up all the way down there. It's been a bit higher up. Here's our next reading comprehension. So this is about the solar orbiter and it makes a close pass flying by the sun. And here is an illustration of it. What is space weather? Space weather describes the conditions within the solar system which are affected by things the sun does. The sun can give off things like solar flares and even types of storms which can affect us here on Earth. On Monday, the European Space Agency, ESA, Space Agency's Solar Orbiter, 
made its first close pass of the sun. Launched on, in February, it has been zooming through our solar system, waiting for this moment. Before we do anything else, let's just check these words. Poles, that's the northerly and southerly points of a planet or a star. Forecasting, predicting future events. Elliptical orbits, revo the revolving of one object around another in an oval-shaped path. And vastness, great, very great in size. Now the team can begin testing the spacecraft's 10 bits of equipment, which includes six telescopes. We have never taken pictures of the sun from a, close, a closer distance than this, said Daniel Muller, an ESA scientist. The Solar Orbiter is the first spacecraft to look at the sun's poles. Almost all other spacecraft looking at the sun have circled around its middle. Now we'll be able to look down on the sun from above, said space scientist Russell Howard. This is important for understanding the sun better and for forecasting space weather events. Space weather events can cause beautiful colours to appear in the sky above our north and south poles. However, they can also disrupt the use of some technology. And that is why understanding when a space event might happen is important. The equipment we take readings will take readings as the spacecraft curves around the sun before a slingshot before slingshotting away again. It will soar back as far away as the Earth before curving around and repeating 22 similar elliptical orbits over the next few years. As well as getting near the sun, it will fly close to Venus eight times and the Earth once as it glides silently along. Despite the vastness of space, the orbiter has already come close to one solar object. By happy chance, the spacecraft soared through the tail of Comet Atlas at the end of May. The scientists were quick to turn on the equipment and collect this rare data. Hopefully, the solar orbiter will continue to be lucky as its mission continues. OK, so here are your first questions. And here are your second questions. Think really carefully about the true and false. OK, and our last piece of news is a piece of news from last week about coal mining. And I thought you might find it interesting. It says the UK doesn't use coal power for two months. What are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels are non-renewable fuels such as coal, oil and gas. They can all be burnt to create energy, which can be used to generate electricity. They also produce greenhouse gases, which can cause climate change. A quick look at the glossary first. Greenhouse gas, a gas that adds to the greenhouse effect. Turbine, a machine in which a wheel or rotor with blades on it is made to spin by a fast moving liquid or gas. Climate, the weather conditions in an area over a long period emissions when a gas when gases are released due to the lockdown there's been less demand for electricity it has also been a record break in sunny may causing more solar power to be produced therefore last week a significant breakthrough occurred as britain went for two months without using coal to create energy this is remarkable because coal has been used in power in Britain for over 130 years. In fact, even 10 years ago, Britain got around 40% of its power from coal-fired power plants. However, instead of coal, Britain has recently been using more renewable sources of energy, such as solar, wind and tidal power. These are called renewable because they don't run out. Also, they don't release greenhouse gases as they make energy. When burnt in a power plant, coal heats up water to create steam. The steam is able to power large turbines which spin to create huge amounts of electricity. This is the electricity we use to power our homes, TVs and games consoles. However, when coal is burnt, it releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which contributes to climate change. Climate change is when the climate of an area changes. Scientists from all over the world have been seeing climates changing and becoming warmer. 
This global warming is caused because there are too many greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Because of the impact of the climate change, the UK government is aiming to reach a net zero carbon emission by 2050. The UK government says that this means that the carbon released into the atmosphere by things like cars and factories must be completely balanced out by things which capture the carbon. To do this, the UK government wants to plant more trees and move away from using fossil fuels to create electricity. OK, here are your first set of questions. And here's the second set of questions. OK, and those are your comprehensions for this week, children. Look out for the learning pack because there will be more comprehensions in there too.